I would like to invite to the podium the Managing Director of People Achieve, Peter Andreu, who will tell us more about leadership. Our keynote speaker, Peter Andreu, is a past president of the Crusaders Club, having held the position in 1996. For the last 30 years, Peter has personally trained more than 10,000 managers and leaders in 25 countries and delivered more than 1,500 workshops. He has pioneered the soft skills training in Cyprus, trained political leaders, multinational companies, and local Cypriot companies. He's an experienced conference chairman and facilitator, and an expert in coaching, leadership, strategy, management, sales, and many other programs. And most importantly, Peter is full of energy and enthusiasm. Please join me in welcoming Peter Andreu. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, how many of you are going to get this wonderful, warm feeling when you stand up here that I'm feeling at the moment, when you stand to talk in front of a group of strangers? OK, we're going to talk about the most exciting subject in the world. What is the most exciting subject in the world? <laughs> What is the mo I can't hear. What is the most exciting subject in the world? Public speaking. <laughs> Leadership. Is there something more exciting than that? No. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> okay. Who is the most exciting person in the world? <laughs> there you go. We have somebody who's the most exciting. Are you exciting people? Yes. I've got a problem. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about you and your leadership abilities, right? Um, is, are you exciting? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. We've got one exciting person. How many of you are leaders here? Mm, about half. Okay, stand up, everybody. <laughs> let's see. Let's test your leadership abilities. What I want you to do is look round, yes, and see if there's somebody near you that you don't know. And I want you to go and introduce yourself as if they're your long lost friend, that your old school friend that you haven't seen all summer and you've suddenly seen them again. And you introduce yourself with a lot of passion and love and <laughs> off you go. Okay, you can carry on later. So what have you just done? You have just influenced somebody in a positive way. And this is my definition of leadership for everybody. Leadership for everybody is the ability to influence. The more influence you have, of course, the bigger a leader you are. So if you take one of the American presidents, we won't talk about them, right? They have a lot of influence. So leadership is simply the ability to influence. You can influence positively or negatively, of course. You're still expressing leadership. So uh, how many of you are leaders? Ah, we've already doubled the amount of leaders in the room. That's amazing <laughs> in three minutes. OK. so. For me, there's over 5,000 books have been written about leadership. I'm going to give you a very simple theory of leadership that we can all practice. Very simple, right? Leaders do three things. They set goals, yes? They communicate those goals in an inspirational way, and then they solve problems so that people can achieve those goals. If you look at everything a leader does, from strategy to management to everything that he does, it fits in those three categories. You're setting goals, you're communicating, and 
the way you communicate, of course, is critical. And then you're solving problems to be able to achieve those goals. Now, in terms of setting goals, there's a very classic way of setting goals. Uh, how many of you have heard of SMART? Okay, quite a few people. How many of you have heard of SMARTER? Ah, uh, not so many people, right? Let's talk about SMARTER goals, right? So SMART, who can tell me what SMART goals are? Who's got a life goal here? Let's see, anybody got a life goal here? Right, a life goal. What is your life goal, Caroline? To go on a walking holiday around the world. Okay, is that a smart goal? Not really. It's not really a smart goal. <laughs> so the acronym SMART, for those who don't know, stands for specific. Is it specific? Yes, it's specific. To walk around the world. Is it measurable? Yes, if you walk around the world, now, where are you going to walk around the world? Through the North Pole, South Pole, Equator? I don't know, but okay, measurable. Uh, have you agreed it with your family, your son, and everybody else? <laughs> so therefore, you have to agree it. That's the A. So S is specific, M is measurable, A is agreed, right? R of smart is realistic. Is it realistic? <laughs> not yet. Ah, now we're getting to see whether it's smart or not. Is it realistic? And is it time-based? By when? By the time I'm 60. By the time you're 60. So now we have a specific, we have a smart goal to walk around the world, right? By the time she's 60, and the only bit that's missing at the moment is the agreed bit. She has to agree it with her family. Okay. <laughs> Right? And how realistic it is, right? Whether she's got the funds and finances and so on. But there's an E and an R, smarter. How exciting is it for you, is the E? Very. Is it very exciting? And then, will there be a reward for you at the end? I just might not come back. <laughs> <laughs> so the R makes it all worthwhile because she might not come back, right? And therefore, she's looking for the reward as well. So that is a smarter goal. So the ability to set smart, smarter goals is very important. Um, that's the first part of being a leader, is the ability to set smarter goals. If you think about being a leader as a, a, as a speaker here, right? Um, if you want to participate in this uh, speech contest, then what's the S, right, for smarter, right? It's to participate in the speech contest. What's the M? The M is whether, which stage you reach. Yeah, so all the people who started, they've participated at their schools, right? Some people have reached this final round, right? So the M is the measure of how much you've achieved with that goal. The A is whether you agree it with your teachers, your parents, the people who support you, and so on. The R, how realistic was it for people to become, to win this speech contest or to attend, right? Uh, the T is the time-based, and we have the final round today. But the E is very interesting, because everybody should get something out of it. Yes, everybody who tries it should get something out of it. It should be exciting just to participate. The reward should be in only participating in this speech conference. So that's smarter for participating in the speech conference. So set smarter Goals for yourself, an acronym. The C is how you communicate. And of course, this is what we teach, Toastmasters, is the ability to communicate with other people. How effective are you in communicating? A leader needs to influence somebody else. So you need followers. You cannot be a leader without a follower. But we all influence each other every day, every morning when we get up, when we walk into the bedroom, when we walk into the kitchen, when we walk into the school, the way we interact with our friends, we're all leading all the time. We're influencing all the time different people. So we're leaders right throughout the day. How much formal training is there of leadership? How many years did you do at school on leadership ability and leadership skills? Zero, yes? Yet the critical skill for influencing people, 
the critical skill for running a company, the critical skill, right, for aligning your family, your team, or anybody else, is leadership. Yet nobody teaches it properly. Toastmasters do. This is what Toastmasters done. And that's why there's so many people involved in Toastmasters. Okay, so the way you communicate, and, in, and if you look at all the different characteristics of leadership that all the different books uh, describe, one of the, my favorite ones is Jim Collins' book on good to great. He talks about leaders and good to great leaders. And at the highest form of leadership, he has humility, humbleness, yes? The ability to learn at any point in time. And I think humility for me is one of the strong characteristics of a strong leader. I've seen thousands of leaders. I've trained thousands of leaders in many countries. I've trained leaders in 25 countries. For me, the best people, the best leaders are the ones who are always open to learning and are not the ones who think they know it all. Yes? Just like our leaders in Cyprus. <laughs> right. So humility, humbleness, the ability to learn is critical, is very important for us all. And then the final one, right, is the ability to communicate, and then you have to, obviously, you set the goals, you communicate, you inspire, you motivate people, and then you have a lot of barriers. How do you overcome those barriers? How do you solve those problems? This is where your creativity comes in, your innovation comes in. If you have the stamina to be a leader, because it takes a lot of stamina to have it, to be a leader, if you keep going, if you overcome all the barriers, and if you have the ability uh, to lead uh, through a lot of resistance. And of course, what a leader often does, he has to bring about change. So those are the three steps for leading, right? Um, often, soft skills need to be practiced. It's very difficult to learn leadership just from reading a book. Although there's many, many books and there's many, many articles, the only way you can really become a leader is to try practicing it and keep on practicing it all the time. So we can all practice, and, and we all have the ability to practice. I remember um, when I went to the Industrial Training Authority, when I started the company sometime, sometime in 1988, I think it was, and I said, I want to build a company in Cyprus, I want to start a company on leadership training. And the Industrial Training Authority, which is the Human Resource Development Authority today, said to me, don't bother, it's a waste of time. There are no, nobody's interested in learning about leaders. Yes? Yet today we know that the critical uh, thing for bringing about change is leadership. Your ability to bring about change, to innovate, to achieve goals is the critical thing for anything. Wherever you are, no matter what position you're at, it's how you influence people and how you get people, inspire people, motivate people, attract people to achieve your goals. So, um, let's uh, finish off with a practical leadership um, task just to see this point that it's not about just learning, but it's about practicing. So everybody stand up one last time. <laughs> Okay, everybody put your hands in front of you like this. Everybody pull them like this. Yeah, some people were walking around last night like this. And we're uh, we're going to clap together. Yes, we're going to clap together. One team, ready to clap together. Are we ready? Clap together. Ready? Let's go. That wasn't very good. I want a really crisp clap. Can we really, how can we get a really crisp clap? What can we do? One, two, three, right, okay. So put them down a second. Do you promise to clap on three? Yes. I've got your promise to clap on three. Yeah, let's go. Ready? Are we ready? Yes. One, two, three. <laughs> Why did you clap on two? <laughs> Why did you clap on three? <laughs> All right, sit down. <laughs> it's not about what you promise. It's not about what you learn. It's about what you do. You did not follow me. You did not follow your promise. Sorry, you did not follow my words. You did not follow your promise. What you followed was what I did. 
So the most important part of leadership is what you do, how you behave. Right? So from now on, think every moment how you walk through a door, how you go to school, how you get up in the morning, how you're going to go back home.